Hey, this is Antonio. Welcome back to my channel. I'm working out some fighting words. In this video, I wanted to go over Manny Pacquiao versus Earl Spence. Um, the first video was just an announcement that the fight was taking place. Now I want to actually go into and delve deeply into the keys of success and possible demise for the other opponent. Um, this video, I'm going to focus solely on Manny Pacquiao, and there will be a follow-up video for Earl Spence. Um, pros and cons, same as I'm going to do for Manny right here. Um, so let's just jump right into it. So when I think about this fight, and I have been thinking about it, I also been, have been doing my own work, and I've been looking at um, recent fights of theirs. But what I see is pros for Manny, and I've been getting a lot of feedback, people writing me and telling me, you know, this, this is what Manny does better, and this is what Earl does better. Um, I, I think it comes down to four categories for Manny. Um, the first would be speed. I definitely think Manny Pacquiao is faster, even in his older age, still faster than Earl Spence. Um, I think, obviously, Manny Pacquiao has the experience. I mean, I, I think he's at like, what, 67 fights or something like that? Like, he's like doubled whatever Earl Spence has. So he's definitely got the experience factor. Um, and I want to be clear when I say this, because a lot of people are saying, you know, like Chris Algieri fought this guy and he fought that guy. And he says, you know, I give Manny Pacquiao the punching power I think he has more punching power. And when I say punching power, I'm not talking about, because um, both guys have knocked people out. And, but when Earl knocks people out, he, he beats them up. And they just kind of succumb to, you know, I don't know, the avalanche that is Earl Spence just coming down on them. Manny Pacquiao has knocked out guys with one punch. So when I say power, I'm talking about one punch knockout power. One punch. He can cut your lights off with one punch. I have not seen Earl Spence cut anybody's lights off with one punch, um, especially at this level of the game. Manny Pacquiao can put you out with one punch. So I'm going to give him an edge. I'm not going to say he gets a full on point when it comes to power, but he definitely has an edge for one punch knockout power. And lastly, I wanna go into grit. I think Manny Pacquiao has more grit than Earl Spence. Now, I do know that grit is a large portion of Earl Spence's game, but if we just compare resumes, it's safe to say that Manny Pacquiao has fought a lot tougher opposition than Earl Spence. The, the two most um, tough, gritty guys that Earl Spence has fought, Kelbrook and Sean Porter. That's it. I mean, we all thought that Danny Garcia was going to do something in the fight, like be a little bit more active in that last fight, and he did virtually nothing. Like, Earl just kind of had his way with him. Kind of just walked him around. Big brothered him the whole night. Um, I, I think Manny Pacquiao, you would give him the grit. Like, just meaning, like, if there's a notch factor, he just has one more notch in grit. I'm not saying he has a lot more than Earl Spence. I'm just giving him one more notch. Um, now, one of the things that I've been getting is a lot of people have been messaging me. First and foremost, thank you for messaging me. It means a lot. And, but a lot of people have been messaging me, and they're saying, well, you know, Earl Spence is bigger, and, you know, so he's stronger. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Manny Pacquiao, nine times out of ten in all his fights, he's usually the smaller guy. So it's not like it's some weird case where he hasn't been here before, and he doesn't know what it's like to be the smaller guy. On the contrary, he's very comfortable being a smaller, smaller guy. He knows all too well what it's like to be the smaller guy. I don't think Manny Pacquiao has ever been the bigger guy. Ricky Hatton was bigger than him. I think Marquez was bigger than him. Like, Floyd Mayweather was bigger than him. And it's very rare to see Floyd Mayweather bigger than somebody. Floyd was bigger than him. So, 
it's nothing new for him to be a smaller guy. Um, Oscar De La Hoya, Hoya towered over him. Cotto was much bigger than him. Shane Mosley, much bigger than him. Margarito looked like a giant. Didn't mean anything. Look how, look how big Jeff Horn was. Didn't mean anything. None of that means anything. You know, it comes down to, to skill, precision, timing. It comes down to understanding of the ring and, and placement of the foot, all those things. That, that's what it comes down to. Your heart, your determination, you putting those two together, that's what it comes down to. How hard you train, that's what it comes down to. Strategy, that's what it comes down to. If that's the case, if we're just going on size, Mike Tyson shouldn't have won, what, 90% of the fights that he won. He was always a smaller guy. He was always been a, he's always been a small heavyweight. Floyd Mayweather, in his money Mayweather days, should have never won any of the fights. He was always smaller than everybody else. That's not true. Look at Canelo. He's knocking out guys much bigger than him. So that's not true. You can't just say just because a guy's bigger, he's going to win. That's not true. Deontay Wilder is a perfect example. He normally gives up 30, 40 pounds. He's, he's a tall guy, but he's a very slender guy. He has a, the body of a, a basketball player versus the guys who have, you know, like football play, player uh, frames. So that's not true. You can't just say because he's bigger, he's going to automatically win. That, that's, not a very, that's not a fair assessment. So I would give him the grit notch. I would say he has more grit than um, Earl Spence. And I'm basing that off the fact that he's always fought bigger guys. He's always fought guys, you know, when you just look at them side by side, you're like, what is he going to do with this big guy? And then he takes him out, you know. And, you know, the way he fights, there, there are a few battles and wars, but he still wins in the end. So I'm sorry I'm going to have to give Manny the, the grit factor. I'm, I'm, he's going to get that notch. So now we have speed. We have experience. I have, you know, so you can understand me, one punch knockout power. Earl Spence clearly is powerful. You know, everybody says that he punches hard, but I'm talking one punch knockout power. I'm going to give that to Manny Pacquiao, and I'm going to give him the grit factor. So those are the four things that I think that he has over Earl Spence. Now I'm going to talk about the things that worry me about this fight. Um... He has been away from the ring for some time. You know, the crisis that happened around the world, which, you know, sidelined everybody, sports in general. So it's not just Manny, but, you know, on top of that, that happened. But also Manny Pacquiao is a very busy guy. I mean, um, he's also a politician, you know, he's helping run a country, you know. So he's a very busy guy, you know outside of prize fighting. And I think when you're away, this is not something you can be away from too long. It's not like you're, you're a, it's not like you're a, a ball player or a tennis player. I'm not knocking any of those things. But there's something about fighting. Per, like, for example, when I'm away from training for too long and then I come back, say if I'm, I'm away for like, I don't train for like two weeks or something like that. I come back stiff. I'm slower, my timing is off, like, even my, I don't feel the, the, the pop, I don't feel a lot of things, you know, and it, regardless of how much stretching I do or anything like that, now, you couple that with a worldwide, you know, disaster that happened, and the fact that he's a politician, and he's, you know, focusing on a, an entire country, and he's just been away for a while, well, that's a lot. You know, that's actually a lot. So I I do worry that, you know, ring rust could be a thing. Um, It was Mickey Ward who said in his third fight against uh, Arturo Gatti, he said, you know, I saw the punches coming. I knew what to do, but my body just wouldn't react to it. And then he followed up and said, you don't know when you get old. You just get old. And that's the thing with Manny Pacquiao. Yes, you are definitely in your golden years. So you can't afford to be, you know, taking these long breaks. Like I said, the disaster that happened around the world is one thing. But it's also very hard to be, you know, a politician coupled with that. You know, so I do worry that, that, you know, his, his time gaps in between fights 
is getting longer and longer. Um, now, tactically, what worries me is Manny Pacquiao doesn't just throw like single shots. You, you don't see too many one twos from Manny Pacquiao. You see one, two, three, four, five, six from Manny Pacquiao. That worries me. Um, overcommitment, overreaching, uh, overstepping. That worries me. Earl Spence is not the guy you want to overextend with and be caught off balance. That's not the dude to do that with. He's just not. He's a great counter puncher, and he will definitely take advantage of it in every way, shape, and form. Um, that does worry me. So I think if you are to play that game and just be classic Manny Pacquiao, wait for the latter rounds. See if you, if you can close one of his eyes. Maybe he's a little you know sore on the body because you've attacked his body. Maybe he's bleeding from his nose and his mouth or something like that. Maybe he's got a cut above his eye. He can barely see out of an eye. By all means, be classic Manny Pacquiao and just rapid fire, machine gun him like you always do. But if not, if he's still intact, say around 7, 8, 9, 10, you don't need to go throwing 50, 15 punches at a time. One, two, one, two, three, break it up, and then move. You, you, I believe Manny Pacquiao is faster. If he can stick and move, I think that's a great game plan. Um, the way he, Manny Pacquiao fought with Margarito, I think, would be perfect. Of course, that was a long time ago. You know, um, even the way he fought with Keith Thurman in the opening rounds, I mean, they. Keith Thurman tends to cover a lot of ground in a ring anyway, but him and Pacquiao covered a lot of ground in that ring. You know, it wasn't like. So a lot of times you'll see a fight where it starts right here and then kind of end right here. But with Manny Pacquiao, it starts right here and then they'll circle around a ring, you know, a few, four, three, four times and they'll end up back over here or something like that. I think he needs to utilize the ring. The ring is so important. If I were Manny Pacquiao, I would request a larger ring. Make Earl work for it. Make him work for it, you know? And I'm not saying chase me, you know, if I was Manny. I'm not saying that because I know he's not that type of fighter, you know? He's a, uh, you know, put your helmet on and go. I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, chase me. But what I am saying is, you know, make him work for it. Make him work for it. That's definitely what I'm saying. Make him work for it. So now we have the cons, the things that concern me, is Manny Pacquiao overstepping and also his time outside of the ring. You know, it being a little, not saying it's too long, but at his age, he can't afford to have these long gaps. Um, yeah, so... Those are the things that worry me. Also, what worries me is Manny has been knocked out in the past. I mean, he can get clipped. He has been clipped. And, you know, these are the pros and cons, and we have to talk about it. Manny has been clipped. He has been clipped by guys much smaller uh, than Earl Spence. Marquez, much smaller than Earl Spence. Uh, so it's possible. It's possible to, to, to cut his lights off. It's possible. Um, however, you know, I think when we're looking at Manny Pacquiao, we have to just keep going back to the Keith Thurman fight. If we go back any further than that, I think it's unfair because, quite frankly, that was a different time, and that was a much different Manny Pacquiao. Um, we have to just look at the Keith Thurman fight. Keith Thurman is a very heavy-handed fighter. Uh, they don't call him one time for nothing because he can put your lights out with one punch. And believe me, he was throwing bombs on Manny Pacquiao, especially in the latter rounds. He was throwing bombs, and he couldn't get Manny Pacquiao out of there. Was Manny hurt? Yes, he was hurt. He even admitted after the fight that he was hurt. He even admitted that he needed to take some time away from the ring because of what that fight, that, that fight had done to him physically. But it didn't take him off his feet. And I don't think too many people would argue with me that Keith Thurman is a much heavier-handed uh, fighter than Earl Spence. And if, if Manny can take some of Keith's shots, I, 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 can, I like to believe 
that uh, he can take Earl Spence. However, one thing that Earl Spence does better than Keith Thurman is follow up. He wouldn't just hit you and see you hurt, you know, and then think, oh, I'll come back to that. Spence would hit you, see you hurt, and quickly follow up on that. There would be no time lapse in that. Um, so that's the, another thing that worries me, you know, Manny's chin. And like I said, it's wear and tear. Manny Pacquiao's been fighting for, what, same amount of time that Earl, that Earl Spence. Floyd Mayweather's been fighting. You know, he's been fighting since, what, the 90s? <laughs> so, you know, it's a long time. It's a very, very long time. And wear and tear is a real thing. And I'm not just talking about, you know, your, your, your ligaments and your bicep from punching. I'm talking about this as well. You know, you get this hit for about 20 years straight. You know, <laughs> it's not a good thing. So I'm, I'm worried about his punch resistance. Just his overall punch resistance. You know, that's, that's something that's going to worry me in this fight, just going in. You know, I, I don't think... I don't think he needs to do... I know it's a lot of controversy when you talk about sparring. I don't think Manny needs to do heavy sparring for this fight. Because keep in mind, look how much experience a man has. I don't necessarily think he needs to do a lot of heavy sparring... I do think he needs, obviously, you do need to spar. But do I think he needs to do heavy leather-on-leather leather sparring? I don't think he needs to do heavy sparring. Just because of his age. Just because of how long he's been fighting. And then who he's going to fight. You know, Earl Spence is big and aggressive. You know, like, so... I don't think you need to go through some long training camp of fighting some big, tough dude who's, like, trying to knock your block off. Then you get in there with Earl Spence, and he's trying to, like destroy that block. I don't think that's the best thing in the world. Um, but those, those are my worries. Those are my worries. His overcommitment, his, his time away from the ring, and his punch resistance. Those, those are some worries of mine. Those are definitely some worries. There's one last worry that's more of a psychological thing, but still, nonetheless, it's a worry because it is, I would say in the sport, it could be a character flaw. Um, Manny can box and he will start off boxing but if you hit Manny and you hit him hard it's like you awake some, some, some junkyard dog and he's just going to go crazy he's going to immediately want that get back um, again going back to the Arturo Gotti and Mickey Ward fight if you look at that fight when Gotti was boxing, he was, it was beautiful boxing. It was perfect. Great footwork, great jab, great combinations. Then the minute Mickey hit him and hit him hard, Arturo's like, I'm done with the boxing. Let's get into a fight. Manny definitely has that same mean streak, but he cannot allow that mean streak to... to to get him off of what the objective is, which is to win. And I don't think him getting into a street fight with Earl Spence is his safest bet. I don't think that. I think you need to stick to boxing. Stick to boxing. He's younger. He's a big, aggressive dude. Like, stick to boxing. Do, don't get into a street fight. Don't do that. Do not do that. That is the last thing you want to do. What you do with Marquez, don't do any of that. <laughs> like, don't do any of that. That's the worst thing you could do. Stick to boxing. Sticking and moving. Um, unless you see fear or hurt or, or, or swelling or blood, don't commit to any more than three punches at a time. Like, honestly. Stick, move. Utilize the ring. Make him work for it. Make him chase you as well. Make him work for it. Make him work for it. Um, I, I think that would be his keys to success. And those are the things that, like I said, that worry me. His punch resistance, his time away from the ring, his psycho psychology of just that, that mean streak that he has. Um, yeah. And his, uh, I think I said punch resistance. If I didn't, also his punch resistance. Um, but yeah, those are the things that worry me about the fight. But I think, like I said, we have some good things. I have four, you know, pros and I have four cons. 
And I think the cons are, um, I think those can be controlled in the fight. I definitely think you can control getting, getting mad in the fight. That's something, especially at his level, with his level of experience as well. He can control getting mad in the fight. He can control how many punches he throws in a fight or how many punches he throws in a single sequence. He can control that as well. Um, I mean, you are going to get hit. It's a fight. But defense, I think he needs to think more defensively minded in this fight. I definitely think that. So those are definitely, uh, like, those are my cons, but I think those cons are very controllable. But you tell me what you think down below, and as always, like and subscribe.